Hello everybody, in this video we are going to cover the muscles of the orbit which are also known as the extraocular muscles. We have a total of 7 extraocular muscles. These muscles are in the orbit but outside the eyeball. Muscles can be divided based on their site of action. The two divisions are the muscle that moves the eyelid and the muscle that moves the eyeball. The muscle associated with eyelid movement is the levator palpebrae superioris and the muscles associated with eyeball movement are rectus muscles and oblique muscles. We have four rectus muscles while we have two oblique muscles. Four rectus muscles surround the eyeball on the superior, inferior, medial and lateral side while the two oblique muscles are present superiorly and inferiorly. We have another point which is the annulus of Zinn. The annulus of Zinn is a common tendinous ring that is present on the bony walls of the orbit. It's present close to the apex of the orbit. So let's start with the extraocular muscles. First we'll look at levator palpebrae superioris. So levator palpebrae superioris is the muscle that is associated with eyelid movement. If you notice the word palpebrae. And if you recollect the video wherein we have covered the facial expression muscles, we have covered the orbicularis oculi. This muscle could be divided into three parts and one of the three parts was the palpable part. And the palpable part was associated with gentle closure of the eyelid. Here we can associate the word palpebrae with palpable and palpable with eyelid. This muscle has the word levator in it. Hence it is associated with levation of the upper eyelid. It originates on the lesser wing of the sphenoid and it inserts onto the skin of the eyelid as well as the superior tarsal plate. Next, we move to the rectus muscle. So, we have four rectus muscles, superior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus and inferior rectus. What is rectus? Rectus means having a straight course or a straight path. If you notice these rectus muscles, they will always move in one direction. All these rectus muscles have one common site of origin which is the annulus of Zinn. All of these rectus muscles are going to insert on the sclera behind the limbus of the eye. Next we have the oblique muscles. We have two oblique muscles superior oblique muscle and inferior oblique muscle. The superior oblique muscle is going to originate on the body of the sphenoid and it will start moving anteriorly. Suddenly it will pass through a pulley like structure which is known as the trochlea which is a cartilaginous structure acting like a pulley. The moment it enters this trochlea it changes its course and starts moving posterolaterally. So the anatomical origin of the superior oblique muscle is the body of the sphenoid but then functionally the origin is the trochlea. Why is the trochlea the functional origin? The trochlea is the functional origin because the moment the superior oblique enters this cartilaginous structure which is the trochlea it changes its course and it starts moving posterolaterally. All of the actions of this muscle are in this direction. Hence, the functional origin is going to be the trochlea while the anatomical origin which is the actual origin site is going to be the sphenoid. The superior oblique is going to insert on the posterior, superior and lateral parts of the eye while the inferior oblique is going to originate from the lateral part of the nasolacrimal canal while it inserts onto the posterior, inferior and lateral parts of the eye. One important point that must be kept in mind is that the inferior oblique is the only extraocular muscle that is originating from the anterior portion of the orbit. All other muscles are originating close to the apex of the orbit. Hence that makes this muscle different with respect to its origin site. This is an overview of what we have covered in today's video. I hope this video was helpful. That's all we have for today. Thank you.